All right, guys. So in the last video, we created this model and added some basic materials in Unity. And in today's episode, we're going to use the Amplify Shader Editor to create a animated material that moves across this tread. So I'm just going to dive in and create a Amplify Shader surface shader. And make sure it's in my conveyor belt folder. And I'm going to name it belt1. And then, whoops. And then in the actual shader settings, we're going to call it Evan Daily slash belt1. Compile. And then on our tread material, we can go into Evan Daily and belt1. All right. Now, uh, first we can add a texture and feed that into the albedo. Um, and if I add a texture here, you'll notice that it doesn't actually go onto the model. So I'm going to use one of the arrows. Th these are some of the default textures in Unity. And I'm just going to use arrow 2 for now. Compile. Oh, and it did show up there, which is very strange. Um, because I'm actually only editing the shader defaults. Uh, you want to make sure you double click on the material so that you're always editing both the shader as well as the material itself. Uh, the next thing I want to do is add a panner node and feed that into the UV. And then I'm going to add texture coordinates. As well as a vector 2 and a time. So time goes in here, the vector 2 goes in as speed, and I'm going to set this to be a property so we can see it in the inspector, as well as edit it through a script, and uh, we're going to call it animation speed. Alright, so when we compile that, uh, now we can actually click on the tread and see these values here. And it's not moving, and that's because we actually don't have any animation speed yet. So why don't we set this to negative 1. And right off the bat, you can see that it's moving. And it looks like it's wrapping perfectly. So that's actually uh, pretty much an ideal situation. And we did, we did create the one seam in the back. So this is what I was talking about. You can see where it breaks. So the the wrapping of the tread isn't perfect, but it's it's pretty damn good. I'm definitely happy with this result. Um, so one of the one of the thing we can do here is add a float. So one left click, and then right click and add a multiply. And so I set the brightness to zero, but now we can move it up to like 0.2. And uh, I think it also would look more natural if we had like a, a different uh, texture. So why don't we try the different arrows? That one's not bad. I think that one looks the best. And instead of doing a float here, we could actually do a color. And if I make modifications in the node editor, it takes a little bit it takes a little bit of time to show up. So I'm going to set this to a property, and then we can edit it down here and see it in real time. All 
Then I'm going to add a separate texture for the albedo. Whoops. Uh, and then we, we want to set the UV on that to be the same input as the first texture. And I've got lots of textures in this project. I was hoping to find one that was just kind of like a bumpy, rough map. Uh, I don't like the color on this one, um, but something like that would would indicate that there's tread here. So why don't we try that one, and then I'm actually going to multiply it by a color. and just give it kind of a dingy gray. And this should be a property as well. Diffuse color, apply. And I actually think it looks better with just the the dingy gray moving across without the arrows. So I showed you a few different options. You can choose the one that you like the best. Um, but I think for my project, I'm actually going to stick with the just the wood texture being multiplied by a gray color. All right, so I guess that wraps this video up. Thank you so much for watching. I had a lot of fun making this. I hope it was helpful. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you want to see more, subscribe. I'll see you guys tomorrow.